Um, and now we have Julie Stockton, who's a general litigation associate with a focus on trust matters at Kerr and Wagstaff. Julie? Great, thank you. Hi, welcome. So a year ago, I sat where you're sitting. I went to this panel and um, I didn't have a job. And I was feeling maybe some of the feelings you might be feeling right now. I was feeling frustrated, anxious, a little nervous about graduating without a job, um, a little down because I'd worked hard in law school and I felt like I should have a job lined up. Um, and I got a lot out of the panel. So some of the tips that I ended up that ended up helping me are things that I learned from coming to the panel last year. So while I was at law school here, I will dabbled in a lot of different areas. So I didn't have a demonstrated interest in one thing by the time I was wrapping up. In fact, I had a demonstrated interest in a lot of different things by the time I was wrapping up. Um, and I had taken some time around the second semester and sat back and thought, okay, what did I really enjoy and what area of law? Because I understood I needed some kind of focus to really help my job search have a focus and help my networking have a focus. Because just looking at a list of potential jobs without much of a focus, it, it can seem overwhelming. Um, and so I really had liked wills and trusts. I really liked the class a lot. I had externed at the probate department of the San Francisco Superior Court. And so I decided to focus on estate planning as well as the different types of litigation that are before the probate court. And then as I spoke with more people, that I also added in an interest in elder care law. And so I had a focus. It had to do with elders and planning for death and dealing with estates after death. Um, but it wasn't so narrow that I, I didn't have some movement within that to respond to different opportunities, um, which is one of the tips that I would pass along, is to develop a focus but not necessarily have to feel super wedded to a really narrow focus. Um, and then I didn't have much of a professional network. I have um, six years between undergrad and law school, but I hadn't ever really had to develop much of a, a strong professional network. I don't like going to big networking events. I don't enjoy it at all. I'm kind of an awkward wallflower. It's not in my character, even though I'm at this panel, <laughs> which might make <laughs> you think otherwise. Um, and so I started to think create, creatively about friends whose parents were estate planners, um, people I had met in law school who had ended up working at firms that also did estate planning or probate. Um, I also reached out to my professors. One thing I was very surprised by, I knew that if I reached out to a professor at Hastings, they would probably meet with me for at least a little bit because I was a student. I wasn't expecting the amount of support that they were willing and interested in providing. And that's not just professors I had because I'd taken a class with them, but it was also professors that were in this, either that were doing things within this area of the law, but I had never taken a class with them. And here I am graduating, and I also met with some after graduation, just saying, hey, I'm interested, can you give me some tips on things I should know? Um, and they were incredibly helpful in helping me then connect with other attorneys and expand my network here in the area, within the, my area of interest. Um, so I would just to think as creatively as possible about the different types of people you know, even if you worked in a non-law setting before, reaching out to those people, um, getting some of your contacts from before law school going can really help build and expand a professional um, network. And then uh, the next step as I was starting to build my network, still no job prospects really. Um, I, I, from this panel, had learned I needed to develop a more of a professional presence. So I ended up getting business cards made. Um, so when I went to networking events, I could hand them out. It feels a little silly, but people, they actually, because it was rare, would look at them and ask me about them. And so it, it was a point of something more to talk about, which is always helpful. Um, and then, I guess not in order, but after, after I had taken the bar and I was waiting for bar results, I developed a blog in the area, so I'd, I forced me to stay up to date on events in my area of law, 
and also it gave me something to direct people who I had met with while I was finishing up my last semester and hadn't spoken to while I studied for the bar because I had I let myself off the hook. I had no expectation of doing anything related to job searching or networking during the summer while I studied for the bar. I just thought, I'm going to study for the bar, and if I have any downtime, I'm relaxing, that's it. <laughs> um, and so having something online I thought was just helpful for going back to some of those people I'd met earlier, saying, hey, check out my blog, I'm starting, I love your feedback, and then also having something to refer people to. Um, I've since I haven't maintained the blog since I got a job, but <laughs> so I should probably take it down. But it was it was a helpful tool I found um, to establish more of a presence in the area. Um, and so I also haven't because I came and watched this panel. My timeline was I wouldn't get a job until about a year later, so spring of the year after I graduated. I just figured I wouldn't do anything while I studied for the bar. And then I'd want to take some time to enjoy life after law school. Um, and then I'd start looking more for a job, but then all of a sudden it'd be the holidays. And so most likely a firm wouldn't hire me. And then at the beginning of the year, firms sometimes are figuring out their budgets and who they can hire. So I figured I wouldn't have a job until March. So early on, I started to think of organizations maybe I would volunteer with or other people who maybe could offer me some paid part-time contract work or opportunities. And so I reached out to professors here at Hastings that um, do like update books every year because I thought, okay, well, if they need maybe a research assistant afterwards, I could do that and I'll make some money doing that. Um, through speaking with another Hastings professor, I was put in touch with the UCSF, UC Hastings Consortium, and they were looking for a fellow after the bar to help write an article about nursing home litigation. So I, I started doing that after I'd taken the bar. Um, and then I also, through my earlier networking, was offered a part-time opportunity to do estate planning as, just on a contract basis after the bar, after I'd taken the bar. So I cobbled together a bunch of these different things that were in my general area of interest, kept me busy, helped me make some money so I didn't freak out. Um, and also gave me something to talk about as well as expand my, my network. Um, and then probably the last thing I did and the thing I did the least, the least amount of frequency is apply to job postings. Um, I, did a, I ended up probably applying to a fair amount, but <clears throat> it wasn't enjoyable. And I didn't, any of the interviews that I ended up getting from job postings, it was because I had also then separately contacted the partner at the firm, trying to just meet with them to get some sense of what they do, more of a networking kind of meeting rather than a job seeking meeting. <clears throat> and then when I got before them and they said, oh, you present well, you're great, let's have you interview for this position, I would get to say, oh, well, I applied for this position too. So. Let's do that. <laughs> I mean, they didn't all, they didn't work out. I had one opportunity that then they just ended up wanting someone with more experience. And so that's something that can be frustrating to hear because you think to yourself, well, how am I, you know, how, how am I ever going to get experience if everyone only wants to hire people with more experience? Um, but it's okay. You just have to persevere. And so I just kept trying to stay as positive as possible and continue to build um, my network by meeting with really almost anyone who would meet with me um, and then framing all my meetings. <clears throat> Sorry, I have a frog in my throat. <clears throat> I forgot water. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> framing all my meetings as, as just, hey, I'm either before I graduated or after I graduated, hey, I'm at UC Hastings, I'm really excited and interested in this area of the law. I see that you do this. Would you be able to meet with me briefly? That was always my kind of cold email when I'd sent it out, send it out to people that I was interested in meeting with. Um, I always emphasized brief because I had learned that most partners make between four and six hundred dollars an hour, if not more. And so if they're going to give me fifteen to half an hour of their time. It's a lot of money that they're giving me. I mean, a lot of valuable time. So. Uh, so that was um, my strategy, 
And then what ended up happening was the smallest thing that I was doing, which was I was helping Professor Wagstaff, civil procedure professor here, update his uh, civil his federal civil procedure guide for the Rudder Group, and it was just a side project. And as I was speaking with him and doing that, I met one of his partners at the his law firm that was interested in growing their trust litigation practice. And he thought maybe they would hire me as a contract attorney for a little bit. And that offer turned into, well, maybe we'll want to hire you full time, but we're not sure. Mm -hmm. And so over a few months and after meeting everybody at the firm, um, I was given an offer to start there full time after they knew I had passed the bar. So, <laughs> so that's, and so I ended up starting there after Thanksgiving. And that's where I've been, and it's been a great fit. And in fact, it wasn't where, when I started my job search, I saw myself ending up. Um, but it's been, I've been really happy there. And so it's really been a great fit. Thank you.